the hormone insulin, which is released from the beta cells of the pancreas in response to elevating blood sugar levels, takes that glucose and helps facilitate its absorption into the cell through something known as insulin receptors. So on every cell there is insulin receptors that combine with the glucose and insulin molecule and the insulin allows the glucose to enter the cell. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review. Today we're going to be talking about insulin, insulin receptors, blood sugar control, and optimal absorption of nutrients so that we can build muscle and burn fat at optimal rates. It's all interrelated. It's all combined. And you have to kind of understand the science of what's going on if you really want to understand how you build muscle and how you burn fat efficiently. You could follow a diet that anyone gives you, a nice template diet, you know, lower carbs, you know, high protein. Some people eat moderate fat, some people eat low fat. You do your cardio, you work out. But the question is, how do we optimize what's going on on a scientific level? Because if we can do that, we can make sure we can extract as much success out of what we do as possible. And that's something that I did my whole career. I kind of made dieting, for a contest or off-season, a science project in a sense. I had to make sure that the science was sound. And you have to understand exactly how the cells work in our body. We have, these, we have trillions of cells in our body, right, that make up every aspect of our body from our skin, our skeletal muscle, our brain cells. You know, the whole body is made of cells that are constantly in a state of turnover and flux and, and rebuilding. But these cells need to eat, essentially. They need to absorb nutrients so that they can, they can prosper, okay? Muscle cells need protein, just like every other cell. They need carbohydrates for fuel. They need fats for, to, to oxidize for energy. And how these nutrients get into the cell is, is different for each macronutrient. Now, when we talk about blood sugar control, okay, we talk about how the molecule glucose gets into the cells. And we could talk, let's just make a, a generic muscle cell since that's what we're talking about working out. How do the muscle cells absorb glucose, which they're going to use for, for fuel, okay? Which is also important in blood sugar control because when you eat carbohydrates and your digestive system breaks down these carbohydrates, whether they be starchy carbs or if you eat just sugar carbs and they get absorbed directly into the bloodstream, now the sugar that's in the blood, because everything ultimately becomes glucose in the blood, has to get into the cells. Now, whether they be the brain cells so you can think, the muscle cells so you can you know, do stuff, um, this glucose needs to get into the cell. Now, we all know that the hormone insulin, which is released from the beta cells of the pancreas in response to elevating blood sugar levels, takes that glucose and helps facilitate its absorption into the cell through something known as insulin receptors. So on every cell, there is insulin receptors that combine with the glucose and insulin molecule, and the insulin allows the glucose to enter the cell. Now, there's, there are also factors that we need to take into consideration that make this absorption sometimes challenging. Because number one, and I've talked about this in, in many other videos, minerals, certain minerals help facilitate the absorption of glucose into the cell. So it's not just an insulin dependent reaction. If you don't have the mineral chromium present, then the insulin can't work. And, and that's a problem because it's very hard to get chromium in your diet. Okay, it's not like one of these abundantly you know, available you know, minerals like calcium and magnesium that you're going to find in, in high amounts in, in all the foods you eat. Likewise, we know the soil that we grow all the foods in nowadays is devoid of, of minerals. It's devoid of vitamins. So the only real way to get enough chromium in your diet is to supplement with it. And most people don't even know if they're taking in any, any chromium, you know, because most people are lucky if they even take a one-a-day multivitamin, which probably doesn't even have enough chromium in it. 
and it doesn't have the right type. Now the best type of chromium would be a chelated chromium, just like all minerals should be chelated or bound to amino acids. Um, I make a product called V-Mineralize, and V-Mineralize has chelated calcium in there, it has chelated magnesium in there, it has chelated uh, chromium in there, and it has all the minerals that your body requires in a chelated form, which makes it easy because the stomach digests off protein, amino acids, and then you absorb the minerals right through your stomach lining, which is, makes it really you know, efficient. Now, if you, assuming we have enough chromium in, in the system, okay, now we just have to make sure we have enough insulin present, right? Because if there's not enough insulin present, then, then the, the blood glucose levels are gonna run high and they're not, you're not gonna absorb all the sugar out of the blood that you should. So two factors here. How much insulin is present? Really three, because how many insulin receptors you have, right? How much insulin's present and is there enough chromium present? To add one more variable, if you don't take in enough essential fatty acids, okay, in your diet, the cell membranes of all the cells, that's the, that's the wall or the, the surrounding uh, outside portion of the cell, which is made of fats, uh, won't be fluid enough. In other words, the essential fatty acids coming from your omega-3 fats and your omega-6 fats are, are intercalated into the cell membrane and it enables it to function properly. So in the absence of enough essential fat in your diet, you're insulin receptors might not work efficiently because the cell membranes will not be in the right configuration or fluid enough to do their jobs. So we want to also make sure we take an essential fatty acid supplement to make sure that our cell membrane, and, and I, I've said this before, you know, people think that protein is necessary to build muscle, but when you break down muscle tissue, which is muscle cells essentially, you're not only breaking down the internal components, which is mostly protein, but you're breaking down the external component, which is the cell membrane, which is made of essentially all fats. So you need to replenish with the right kind of fats, specifically the essential fatty acids, so that you can repair muscle optimally. So now we have essential fats necessary for, for absorption of nutrients through the cell membrane. Chromium is a cofactor which we actually call it the glucose tolerance factor, GTF, insulin, okay, and insulin receptors. So, and they, these are all, these all tie together. Now, bodybuilders eat a lot of food, okay? We consume five, six, some people eat eight times a day. Back in my day, when I was in uh, 315 pounds, I was eating 12 times a day, you know, six shakes and six food meals. That's a lot of nutrients to absorb. That's a lot of insulin that's required. And not everyone's body can produce enough insulin. And I've done a whole video on the fact that uh, what I explained was that bodybuilders are very rarely insulin resistant, meaning that the, most bodybuilders have enough insulin receptors because exercise induces that lean source of protein, essential fatty acid, you know, you know, ingestion. All the things we do induce a state of good insulin receptivity. The problem we have is because we eat so much food qu quantity-wise, a lot of times we don't have enough insulin present and we need to supplement with insulin in order to absorb all our food. And the only way you would know that would be to test your blood sugars. And we've, I've done innumerable videos about testing fasting blood sugars first thing in the morning. They should be under 90. If they're over that, it means you're not producing enough insulin. And your two-hour post-meals, which are known as your postprandial, uh, blood sugar should be under 130. Most bodybuilders have no problem with getting under 130 for the two hour post meals, but it's the uh, fasting sugars in the morning that, that are running high because when you're sleeping at night, right before you wake up, there's something known as the dawn phenomenon where your liver cranks out an enormous amount of glucose in preparation for you waking up in the morning so that you have enough energy to move. You know, it was probably something evolutionarily, you know, set in stone for back in the caveman days when, you know, you had to be worried about a saber-toothed tiger coming and killing you. And if you had to wake up at a moment's notice, you needed energy on board. So whether that's that little story is true or not, what happens is about two hours before you wake up, your body surges glucose from the liver, it releases this liver, uh, liver stored glycogen as glucose into the bloodstream, and then your body has to produce enough insulin to lower it. If your insulin okay, output 
for the day is being taxed already because you're eating so many meals, a lot of times guys wake up and, and women wake up with high fasting blood sugars. And that's something that needs to be addressed because in the case of like people who work out bodybuilders, it's usually just not enough insulin. And in which case, a long-acting insulin uh, could definitely help and support the use of or the eating of all that food and consumption of all that food. Now, in a pre-contest situation when you're dieting down, usually you don't see the high you know, fasting blood sugars because now the food consumption quantities are greatly reduced as well as the carb content. So that makes it easier for your pancreas now to keep up with what's going on. So these are all variables that you have to take into account. So to recap this whole this whole video, I guess you could say, and what it's about, which is blood sugar control, we need cells that have good insulin sensitivity. Well, exercise, lean source of protein, fish oil supplements, essential fatty acid supplements like my Omegalyze formula will help with the insulin sensitivity. And most, like I said, people who work out don't have that issue. So we have enough insulin receptors, okay? We need chromium as a cofactor so that insulin can work. If you take a good multivitamin like V-mineralized, that's going to be in there. Then we know that now insulin can work. Now the question is, do we have enough insulin? Okay, And that can only be determined by testing your blood sugars during the day. Your fasting blood sugars first thing when you wake up in the morning and two hours post-meal. Two hours post-meal should be under 130. Fasting should be under 90. If they're not, that needs to be addressed as well. And if you fix all these problems and you have good blood sugar control, which is going to be determined by, once again, the readings on the glucometer, you're going to, number one, efficiently absorb all your food. So that means that your blood sugars are good. It means your body is efficiently absorbing everything that you're eating. It's also going to enable you in a dieting scenario to ensure that you're not overproducing insulin, okay, because you're not gonna get super low blood sugars, and that you're able to burn fat efficiently. Remember, if your body produces too much insulin because you're insulin resistant, well, let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're not taking in enough chromium, okay, in your diet. So you're dieting, you know, your body, you eat a certain, a little bowl of oatmeal maybe, it could be a tiny, tiny amount. You might not even be eating any carbs, you might just be producing some carbs from gluconeogenesis. And what happens is your body releases insulin so you can absorb this little bit of carbs, but you don't have enough chromium present. So your body doesn't know what's going on. Your body doesn't realize it's missing chromium and doesn't, thinks it doesn't have enough insulin. So it starts releasing more and more and more insulin. Now you have too much insulin around. And what does insulin do? It stores calories as fat. So it's gonna be very hard to burn fat in a scenario where you're overproducing insulin. So that's why it's very important that you take those essential fatty acids, you know, coming from a product like Omeglage, and then you take the chromium to make sure that the insulin works properly. So you got your cell membranes that are fluid and moving properly. You got your insulin receptors that are working now, and you have your chromium as your, your cofactor with insulin to absorb the blood glucose out of the bloodstream. Once you do that, now you're efficiently firing on all cylinders. You're going to burn fat optimally because you're not going to over-release insulin and you're going to build muscle efficiently because you're going to be absorbing all your nutrients. And it's not that hard, but it's important to understand the dynamics of how this all interrelates with each other. And that's why I'm a big proponent of nutritional supplementation because there is just some supplements you cannot get in your foods and that you want to ensure that you take in, even if you might get them in your foods because if you don't get enough of for instance, in this example, chromium or essential fatty acids, your insulin sensitivity is going to suffer and or the fact that you're not going to be able to absorb your nutrients efficiently and or you might even produce too much insulin and then have a fat storage problem. So I hope this uh, video helped. I hope it kind of clarified and brought together a lot of the principles that we talk about in terms of blood sugar control. Now, I want to mention one thing because I know there's a lot of supplements on the market that people sell that are insulin sensitizers, berberine and cinnamon and chromium, and those are, those are fine, but those are not going to help ultimately uh, a lack of enough insulin, okay? So you could take those all day long, and if they do fix your blood sugar issue, then maybe that there is a sensitivity problem, but by and far, if you're running high fasting blood sugars in the morning, more than likely, you're going to have to supplement with some insulin some long-acting insulin to really address the problem properly. 
But every case is an individual by individual basis. I have people emailing me on a daily basis telling me what their numbers are and, and what they're eating and what they're taking. And usually I can make a, a good recommendation based on what they're doing. But if you follow all the tenets of what I just laid out in this video, you're gonna have all your bases covered and you're gonna know, hey, I don't produce enough insulin or yes, I do produce enough insulin because if you take care of all the other variables, it comes down to do I have enough insulin or not? And as a bodybuilder, that's a real question you need to ask yourself and we never really conceptualized because we never thought about the fact that, hey, most people don't eat six to eight times a day. They don't have to absorb that, much, that many nutrients on a daily basis, but bodybuilders do. And the, and the thing that, that tricks us is that we're not fat. We utilize all those nutrients that we, that we consume. So you know, the average person, if they ate eight times a day, they'd probably be a fat slob. But if you're working out hard and you're breaking down a lot of muscle and you're eating the right foods that many times a day, we really do need that much nutrients. And you know, I see this in endurance athletes too, like triathletes and stuff like that. They're eating enormous, enormous amounts of carbs. And a lot of them are just nutritionally deficient because they don't understand nutrition like bodybuilders do or supplementation. And it's very important, chromium, essential fatty acids for insulin sensitivity and for allowing the body to actually be able to absorb glucose into the cells. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review.